Aside from temperature and carbon dioxide, another factor that influences and affects hemoglobin's ability to bind oxygen and therefore affects the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is something known as 2,3-biphosphoglycerate or simply 2,3-BPG. So 2,3-BPG is a 3-carbon sugar that is an intermediate in the process of glycolysis. So when we break down sugar, specifically glucose, into pyruvate molecules to form ATP in the process of cellular respiration, we essentially form the 2,3-BPG as an intermediate. Now when our cells are exercising, when they have a relatively high rate of metabolism, they can produce an excess amount of 2,3-BPG. And some of these 2,3-BPG molecules can ultimately leave these exercising cells and enter the capillaries that are found next to these exercising cells. And once the 2,3-BPG molecules are inside the capillaries, they enter the red blood cells where we have the hemoglobin molecule. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So these are the exercising cells that have have a relatively high rate of metabolism found within our tissue. Now, when we produce an excess amount of 2,3-BPG, some of these molecules leave the cell and enter our matrix. Now, what exactly does a 2,3-BPG molecule actually look like? Well, it looks something like this. So we have one, two, three carbons, and we also have these two phosphate groups. And as we'll see in just a moment, these two phosphate groups, because they have a negative charge, they play a crucial role in actually binding to our deoxyhemoglobin molecule. So once our 2,3-BPG molecules into the matrix, they then diffuse via the capillary wall and into the blood plasma found inside the capillary. So this is our capillary. And inside the capillary, we have red blood cells cells, our erythrocytes that carry our uh, hemoglobin proteins. So within our red blood cell, we have many of these hemoglobin proteins as shown. And if we zoom in on a single hemoglobin, this is what we're going to see. So recall that our structure of hemoglobin contains four individual polypeptide subunits. So we have alpha-1 and alpha-2, and we also have beta-1 and beta-2 subunit. Now, each of these subunits contains a heme group shown in brown, and that heme group is capable of binding a single diatomic oxygen molecule. So once our 2,3-BPG molecule enters the red blood cells, what exactly takes place? Well, basically, some of these hemoglobin molecules inside our red blood cells, some of these hemoglobin proteins, will not contain any oxygen. And these are called deoxyhemoglobin proteins. And the 2,3-BPG molecules, these molecules will be able to bind to a cavity, to a space, found between the beta-1 and the beta-2 subunits of deoxyhemoglobin. So deoxyhemoglobin has a cavity between the two beta subunits to which the 2,3-BPG can comfortably bond to via electrostatic forces. So between the beta-2 and the beta-1, we have residues, we have amino acids that contain side chains that have positive charge. And these positively charged sections of beta-2 beta and beta-1 subunits can bond electrostatically to the negatively charged phosphate groups of 2,3-BPG. And this space, this cavity inside the hemoglobin only exists when no oxygen are actually bound to the heme groups found within our hemoglobin. So once again, note that 2,3-BPG can 
only bond to deoxy form of hemoglobin because when oxygen actually binds onto the hemoglobin, it creates a conformational change that squeezes in, that narrows in that space in the middle. And so once oxygen is actually bound to the hemoglobin, that space closes in and the 2,3-BPG shown in purple can no longer actually bind onto our hemoglobin. So once again, 2,3-BPG only binds to deoxyhemoglobin proteins found within the red blood cells. Now, once the 2,3-BPG actually binds to our deoxyhemoglobin, it makes the protein much less likely to actually bind to other oxygen molecules. And what that means is, a high concentration of 2,3-BPG inside the red blood cells shifts the entire oxygen hemoglobin disso uh, dissociation curve to the right. And to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So the y-axis is the percent saturation of hemoglobin and we range from 0 to 100 percent. The x-axis is the partial pressure of our oxygen inside our tissue, exercising uh, tissue, and that is given to us in millimeters of mercury. And so we begin at 0 mmHg and we end up at 100 hHg. Uh, HHMG. So notice that this partial pressure corresponds to the partial pressure inside our lungs and this partial pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury corresponds to the partial pressure inside the tissue of our body. Now the blue curve is the curve that describes our relationship when we don't have any 2,3-BPG present inside our bl uh, blood plasma. But when we have 2,3-BPG present, the red curve is the curve that describes the relationship between our hemoglobin and the partial pressure of oxygen. And notice that the red curve is shifted to the right of our blue curve. And that's exactly what we mean by shifting the curve to the right side. Now, why does this actually take place? Well, let's take a look at our tissue partial pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury. So if we draw a vertical line and we find the corresponding Y coordinates, the Y points, for the blue curve, when we don't have any 2,3-BPG present in the red blood cells found inside the capillaries, we see that we have a percent equaling to about 70% saturation of hemoglobin, but at the same exact partial pressure, for our curve that contains the 2,3-BPG, we have a value of about 60% saturation of hemoglobin. And the fact that we have less saturation of hemoglobin in our, in our red blood cells that contain the 2,3-BPG, that basically means more, or more of these hemoglobin molecules are not actually bound to the oxygen and so more oxygen is unloaded into the exercising cells of our tissue. So when our metabolic rate inside the tissue increases, they require more oxygen to actually produce ATP. And that's exactly why the 2,3-BPG enters the red blood cells in the first place to stimulate our uh, deoxyhemoglobin to not actually bind to the oxygen so that more oxygen is allowed to travel into the cells of the exercising tissue. So once again, from the graph, we see that 2,3-BPG helps unload more oxygen into the metabolically active tissue. At a partial pressure of about 40 millimeters of mercury, the red curve shows a smaller percent saturation, about 60%, compared to the blue curve, which shows about 70%. And this implies that when 2,3-biphosphoglycerate is present, it is bound to deoxyhemoglobin and it makes it much less likely to attach to oxygen. And so more oxygen actually unloads 
into those exercising tissues that have a high metabolic rate. So we conclude that just like increasing the temperature and increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide inside our blood plasma shifts the entire curve to the right, so does increasing the concentration of 2,3-BPG. Now, if we decrease the concentration of 2,3-BPG, the red curve will essentially shift to the left side. So increasing 2,3-BPG shifted to the right, but decreasing it shifted in the opposite direction to the left side.